Hi, welcome to this tutorial on inverse functions. Now what is an inverse function? Well first of all then, let us just suppose that y equals some function of x. Let's take a very simple function just to demonstrate this. Let's say where f of x equals x plus 2. So what does this mean? Well if we have say an x value, let's suppose it was say 5, then if I did f of 5, that would mean that if x were 5 in here, we would get f of 5 would equal 5 add 2. 5 add 2 is 7, so f of 5 becomes 7. 5, if you like, gets taken to, gets mapped to 7. And this value here is the y value. y equals f of x. Now when we're looking at inverse functions, what I want to do is find a function which we call f to the minus 1. This is the notation we use to mean an inverse function. And what that function is, is some function that takes the 7, this, in this case, back to the 5. So in other words, f to the minus 1 of 7 brings us back to 5. So what would this function be, this inverse function? Well, just by looking at it, you should be able to see that that inverse function, in general, f to the minus 1 of x is x minus 2. We were adding 2 here, now I end up subtracting 2. And you can see that it works because if I put x is 7 in here, then 7 take away 2 becomes 5. Now this is a very easy example just to demonstrate to you what an inverse function is. But the functions that you're going to meet are most probably going to be far harder than something like this, that it's awkward to just see by sight what the inverse function is. So there's got to be a better method. And what is that method? Well, I'll show you here, okay? As I say, I know that this is an easy one, but this is just used to demonstrate the method. What we do is because we're working backwards, these values on this side, which were y's, now become x's. So what I need to do is say, let x be that f of x. So we say, let x equal, okay, so I replace the f of x with an x. Now because we're working backwards, all the x values on this side now become y values. So wherever you see any x's in your equation over here, change them to y's. So we just put y plus 2. Now what I do is I make y the subject. So I need to rearrange the equation that we've got here. So all I need to do is subtract 2 from both sides. So therefore I have x minus 2 equals y, or in other words, y equals x minus 2. Now the y values are the f to the minus 1 of x values, so we just replace the y with f to the minus 1 of x. f to the minus 1 of x equals x minus 2. And you can see that this is obviously the same as this. So it's this method that I'm going to apply to all the questions that I have to do now on inverse functions, where I cannot guess what the answer is going to be, where it's just not obvious. So I'll run through an example to demonstrate this again for you. So here we have, if f of x equals 3x minus 2, all divided by 8, find the inverse function f to the minus 1 of x. 
So what we need to do is to say let x equal and wherever we see any x's in here we replace them with y's. So that becomes 3y minus 2 all divided by 8. Now I have to make y the subject. So I'd first of all multiply both sides by 8 and I would have 8x equals 3y minus 2. Then add 2 to both sides so we have 8x plus 2 equals 3y and if I now divide both sides by 3 that will leave me with y equals 8x plus 2 all divided by 3. I now replace the y with the inverse function f to the minus 1 of x and I just copy this down as being 8x plus 2 all over 3. And there you have it, the inverse function for x. But just don't take my word for it that this is right, we can actually check this out. Look, we can take any value of x, let's say we take x to be 6. So if we took x to be equal to 6, then f of 6 becomes 6 threes are 18, take away 2 is 16, 16 divided by 8 is 2. Now if I do f to the minus 1 of 2, what do I get back? Well we have 8 times 2 is 16, 16 plus 2 is 18, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. So you can see that I've been able to verify that this works. So that's how you find the inverse function. Now in other tutorials that I do on this, I'm just going to demonstrate harder functions like exponential functions, log functions, where we can apply this to. So I hope you'll look at those and uh, use this technique to find your inverse function.